big one. That's just that. Chizora Fury. Where do, you, where do you think the winner lies? I know you've said the one with the most well, draw, the most determination. I'm, but Derek's, you know, ma- I'm Derek's manager. Of course, and, and you're going you're to back and your I'll, man. And I'll, you know, I'll, you know, Derek for me is uh, he's, a, he's a real warrior. Um, and when you look at the way he's done it, and look at some of the bad decisions that he's had against him, like that hilarious fight. He should, you know, he was number one in the world at the time. It's a disgusting decision. He won that. But all that stuff is great experience for him. You know, not only is it, I hate to say, character building, but you know, it is. It shows you what you know, what you've got to do to win fights. It also, um, he's been in with good quality, quality opposition. Far better opposition than Vitaly. Uh, Klitschko's fault or, or his brother's fault led me in their last few fights he fought better, better quality operators and I think that um, that will stand me good stead against Tyson Fury their first fight Tyson deserved to win it he, he trained for the fight and he won it and, he, and, and no one could take it away from him Derek came in overweight that's his fault no excuses best man won on the night it's a different scenario now you know, Derek's a changed guy he's changed his, the way he lives in, as far as his dietary requirements he's a father He's matured mentally, um, and I think that that t- t- makes him a different a different um, boxer altogether. The other side of it, so is Tyson. You know, Tyson's come on since that win. He's shown that he can get on the floor, he can get off the floor. He's got, you know, he's a brave guy like Derek, brave guy. So I think you've got two fellas there who've got, you know, don't want to lose. Will give everything. Will give their hundred percent. But more importantly, know that the winner is going to get a crack at the world title on decent terms, i.e. they're going to be mandatory challenger. It's not going to be a voluntary defence, and Klitschko won't be able to duck him. That's what makes this fight, this fight such a, uh, an intriguing fight, such an exciting fight, such a dynamic fight, and that's what makes, for me, that Derek can get through this. There was, there was a bit of a cheeky reference to the fact from... Uh, a certain camp I won't mention that Andy Joshua could probably get in with Evia now he might not have the experience but he has the tools that seems to be the, the thought process your thoughts well you know if I was involved with Anthony Joshua and I, by the way I like Anthony Joshua so let's get it right I'm, you know I'd love to have, have signed him however you know what, what, why would you even talk how many fights he had now five or six fights six. why would you even go down that road and even say that why, why put that pressure on him Anthony Joshua I'm sure will come through at the end of the day and do what he's got to do now, I'm hearing he's been on the floor a couple of times in sparring, so but people say things in, in this business, so you've got to take that with a pinch of salt. But having said all of that, you know, Anthony, I think, is a, is a really good talent, and, and hopefully the people who he's trusted his, his, putting his career in their hands will be able to guide him correctly and bring him through. They've not done it with any fire yet, True. so but maybe they, maybe they will, maybe they won't, who knows. But the yeah. fact of the matter is, he's a, he's a good quality young fighter, but they shouldn't even put that pressure on him. It's ridiculous. Let's talk about a fighter that you're guiding, guiding well, I might say, Billy Joe. How frustrating is it when they get injured and you know that they could achieve so much um, at this point in their career? And most notably, what do you learn about that, that fighter mentally? Physically, we know what he's about. But during that period, what do you learn about him mentally? I think, you know, from a mental point of view, it's obviously very frustrating. What the problem is, when a fighter you know, especially if they, you know, they haven't got great discipline in, in, into what their, you know, their dietary requirements are and so on, they balloon up. And then you get to a fight and what they're doing, they're training to make the weight rather than training for a to fight, right. which is not good. good thing to, um, Bill, the, the, you know, hopefully the penny's dropped there and he knows that's not the case. He's probably 18 months behind schedule. He's been out for a while. He's had you know, operations on his hand. Uh, he hasn't fought since last September, so he'll be nearly a year, 10 months out the ring, and he's come in against the guy who's 22 and 0, a virtual eliminator for the world title. So it's a tough call for him. But you know what? He, he fought in Beijing. Um, the Olympians need to be stepping up now to be winning world titles or be fighting for world titles. So him, Frankie Gavin, and James D. Gow, that's where they need to be. And you know, and Bill's capable of doing that. Just to, to say these little hiccups along the way. Hopefully, he's learnt from. It's, you know, it's a uh, character building or whatever you want to call it but there are things that as far as I'm concerned that you have to deal with as a fighter it's not ideal but you have to deal with it and if that's going to make you a better fighter you learn from it you can un- you know you, you start understanding your body understand what you need to do to your body you know and I was using it sort of in the press conference day you're a Rolls Royce don't put diesel in me put the best juice in me you know live the life have the right mechanics around you and that's what he needs and, and you know he's capable of doing it and it's just it's up to him 
I can open all the doors, his trainer can do all the things he needs to do. The bottom line now, whatever happens to Billy Joe Saunders, is in, literally in his, his fist. Got a bit of a war of words going on with uh, old Eubank there. That's obviously something that's going to flourish and yeah. you know take us forward in the future. But what do you think about the antipathy between the two? Good for the sport, bad for the sport? Really, should they be looking at each other? I mean, they seem to be in such different places. Well, I agree with you. you know, um, young Christopher's a decent talent, very decent talent. He had a very good performance, I thought, last time. Um, you know, Bill's British, Commonwealth, European, fighting you know, number one spot. Is Chris ready for that? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, that he's going to be stepping up his opponents over his next few fights, I'm sure of that. And him and Bill down the road is a natural, a natural fight. I don't think there's any love lost there, and I think that's for various things that have been said. But at the end of the day, that's nothing unusual in boxing. Uh, what do you, what do you make? How do you assess um, Eubank's career so far? I mean, he's well, fighting he's, eight rounders, he's 15 fights in. Is that where you would like to I see would, a fighter? No, I think of... he should be stepped up. Now he should at least be having a 10 right round fight, and I think really the next two or three fights he should be fighting for a title. That's my opinion. But I'm not his manager. Mm. So far, what do you reckon? I, do. I think he's. I think you know he's had, what, he's had three fights for me in the last few months. Yeah. Um, he's looked good in all of them. He's gone out and done what he's had to do. He's, I thought his last fight was spectacular. He had a tremendous punching through caught the, caught the lower. I think he's very exciting. I think he is an exciting young fighter, and he does need to be stepped up. There's no doubt about that. His dad knew how to market a fight, didn't he? His do you dad, think he's taken a leaf or two out of his book? I think that you know, with that, obviously his dad's a huge influence there. He's, he's I don't know what you would call him, de facto manager, or whatever. Um, I know he's taking the seconds license out now, so I oh, expect right, okay. him to be in the corner for his next fight. Maybe he won't be, but, he's, but you know, Chris is Chris really does believe in his son. I mean, I've had conversations. He really, really does believe. In him. He really thinks he's all the things that are being said. He believes it. When you look across the middleweights globally, the names, the marquee names, how far off are those two fighters? Well, if Bill, Bill comes through against. Uh, the Italian, and I hope he does come through. I really do think he's got a great chance against Quinn. Quinn's a good puncher, he's a very good puncher. Um, I think a good, some of a boxing brain, I think, can, you know, and they got the discipline to keep to their boxing, I think can be. And it's been interesting to see when someone really puts it on him. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it.